There are three things we all should do every day. We do this every day of our life. You're going to have, what a wonderful, number one is laugh. You should laugh every day. Number two is think. You should spend some time in thought. And number three is you should have your emotions moved to tears. Could be happiness or joy. But think about it. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. That's a heck of a day. That is a full day, and we have a full day of basketball here in Raleigh, North Carolina, as we are ready for game two of the Jimmy B Women's Classic. In game number one, Jamie Carroll, number two, Texas, to a 69-56 win over NC State. The Longhorns look very hungry to return to the final four. The Jimmy B Women's Classic is fueled by Pontiac, and here in game two, It'll be a couple of top 10 teams going at it. Number four, Duke against number six, Purdue, in the second half of our doubleheader. And a look at the top 10. You'll see both of these teams prominent. Obviously, Texas is going to hang on to that ranking right behind Connecticut. And Duke and Purdue to slug it out in the second game. Nice to have you with us at the RBC Center in Raleigh, everybody. Dave O'Brien along with Annie Myers and Doris Burke. Game one, well, Texas took control of that. And here in the second game, we're looking at a couple of stars who can really take over a game all by themselves. Elena Beard and Sharika Wright for Duke and for Duke. Elena Beard may be the best player of her generation. Well, she is, but we're, I'm going to talk about Sharika Wright first at 5'10". She's a senior, averaged almost 19 points a game, gets herself to the free throw line almost 10 times a game, and this kid can board. Can get there in the and Gail Guest, of course, talked to Elena Beard after the loss to Texas last Sunday and said simply this, whether you like it or not, we follow your lead. If you press and play tight, we're going to do the same thing. That four for 17 against a very disciplined Purdue team. She'll have to be better today. Elena Beard has been dishing out a lot of assists over the first couple of games of the season, but not a whole lot of offense, and they'd like her to do a little more shooting as opposed to passing the basketball. So it's Purdue and Duke going at it in game two of the Jimmy B Women's Classic. Purdue in the black road uniforms, and we are underway as Harding gets it in the backcourt, chasing it down for Gail Gestencourt's team. They were picked to win the ACC again. They have a 43-game conference winning streak, so they're playing a very demanding out-of-conference schedule. Duke and Purdue back-to-back -back weekends. Duke taking on Texas. Shot clock is down to 11. There's Beard, first touch inside, got it. Uh, Beth Jones, I'm not sure she's got the lateral speed to guard Beard, especially off the dribble drive. Gail Gessenkors, after that Duke loss, said, we are going to work on patience and discipline. We need to run our offense. You could see that Duke ran the shot clock down, and they're going to make five to six to seven passes in their offense. Sharika Wright losing it as she got her hand on it for the first time this afternoon. As we look at the starting lineup now for the Duke Blue Devils last year with a record of 35 and 2, just one loss that came to Connecticut in the Ballyhoo number one against number two clash in February. As far as regular season losses, just the one and lost to Tennessee. Now, Duke did not play very well against Texas last week, but they had a game the other night against Elon College where they won by 82 points, held them to 26 points, 108 to 26, and it was really a confidence booster for that Duke team. Nice Tillis. Missing down low, right underneath the basket for Duke. Confidence booster, but I'm not sure it's a measuring stick they can put any use to. I'm not sure that physically it was any kind of matchup. For Purdue, the starting lineup, Hicks, Wright, Pikus, Jones, and Volek. No, I'll agree with that, but sometimes when you've got players that, whether they're veterans on the team or even young players, it gives you a sense of timing, yes. understanding your offense a little bit better, and how to run your defense. And that confidence level, yeah, it's not a good team, mm. but the fact that you're playing well together. Well, one of the things Gale did in the second half against Elon was put in the five pass rule. They were not allowed to shoot the basketball unless it was a layup at, until five passes were made. Monique Curry one handed, got it to go from close range, and Duke leads it four to nothing. Monique Curry, the sophomore from Washington, D.C., missed all of last season with a torn ACL in her left knee. And if she's healthy, if she can play a lot of minutes for Gail Guest, of course, look out for Duke to get on a roll early in the season. Well, Emily Hike has played so well against Nicole Oldie last week. Now, whether Hikus can have that same kind of success against Isis Tillis, I don't think so. Tillis is an outside player that, play, that can go inside, but she likes to face up. 
Gail Guest, of course, has led Duke to the Final Four three times in the last five years. She was an assistant coach at Purdue in the late 80s. That program under the fine leadership of Christy Curry in her fifth year. She has called this the deepest team she's had at Purdue, returning four senior starters. And she was in a finals in 2001 where they lost by two only in her second year to Notre Dame. Isis Tillis will go to the line to shoot two, almost a three-point play. Couldn't get it underneath. 17-39 to play, just getting started here in the first half. We've got interesting matchups, Dave, all over the floor. On the other side of things, they've elected to put Elena Beard on the point guard, Vallette. They have elected such a solid job running the offense for Purdue. If they trap her and get it out of her hands, it'll be interesting to see how Purdue reacts. A lot of the players here at the Jimmy V, and this was the case at the State Farm last weekend as well, played a lot of big games during the summer and key games. Isis Tillis, she played on the Pan Am Games, the silver medal team with Jamie Carey down in the Dominican Republic. We just saw Jamie with 23 points in game one and a victory for Texas. Well, that came right out of her shoe. Well, you She's can't call a timeout on that unless you just call the timeout. <laughs> she was thinking about it, though. She looked at the ref and said, I lost my shoe. He said, I really don't care. <laughs> You've got to find a way to get it back on during the course of the game. 17-19 left. Eric Rutten, one of the officials today. She's going to lace it up and tie it a little bit tighter this time. Now, some players like to play with them a little loose. <laughs> Those are high tops, too. Yeah. Well, the thing is, too, with a lot of players today, you see the, the thick ankles right there by Erica Vilek because of the ankle braces. A lot of players not just don't get their ankles taped, they have these big ankle braces. So the shoe doesn't stay on as well. A turnover early. The pressure by Elena Beard on the dribble drive by Vilek. This is a very fascinating matchup. I mean, Christy Curry, do you make an adjustment? Well, Christy Curry knew coming into this game that that would probably be the matchup and Harding on Beth Jones. And so really the only way you can practice that is to have Sharika Wright guard Vilek in practice. But Wright guards is on the first team. Duke is keeping good care of the basketball in the first three minutes. Not so for Purdue. The Boilermakers only have one shot. Shot clock at five. Way off the mark by Curry, but she had to hustle it. Tossed up in the air, Bass comes down with it, and the shot clock expires. The shot never touched anything, and Gail Gessencourt is saying, come on, there was a change of possession, but it wasn't because her team got it back, and they, they are going to call that, though. That even though the shot was missed, it was going out of bounds, saying that Purdue got the ball, that was a change of possession, so the shot clock should have been re but I'm not so sure they were going to rule that way until Gail came right. thundering off that bench, and she made sure they knew it and saw it her way. So she really got that back for Duke. Oh, got nice a basket as Hunter lays it in. Little mid-post screen, and Hunter rubs her defender off pretty. Quick start here for Duke. They lead it 8 to nothing, and really harassing Purdue big time here. And I thought last weekend, as we saw four of the best teams in the country play, I thought Purdue was the most prepared to start the season of any of them. We yeah. Talk, we talked to assistant coach yesterday, Doris and I, Kelly Curry, for Purdue, and he, he was even kind of surprised. He said, we're kind of like in mid-range season right now, conditioning-wise and how we're running the plays. But you know what? A different matchup, as Doris said. You've got different players, athletes. And Duke has come in with a different mindset because when you lose a game like they lost against Texas, your focus is completely different on the things that you're going to work on. Beth Jones in the lane, a wild play, and she commits the charge. She slipped there in the paint, lost her footing. The Duke program, Gail Gessenfors has her team work on charges. They keep track. That is one of their stats. And Monique Curry stepping over on the weak side, hesitated a little bit, but then she got in position. She made sure that that bump was there, and she took the charge. Now, this team looks entirely different than they did just seven days ago. Yeah, they sure do. Wow. Duke playing with great energy, attacking the basketball on defense and on offense. Harding up top for Hunter. Brittany Hunter. Elena Beard gets a touch. And Christy Curry has gone in with a big lineup. Erica Vilek is still in there, the ball handler, but she's put in those two freshmen, made them a little bit bigger. Well, they dropped down a double team Tillis that nearly caused a turnover, and it will go the other way. Boy. So Purdue will have it when we come back. The pace, very fitting for Elena Beard and Duke so far.
First rule of special ops, be aware of your surroundings. Complete visual clarity, because survival, safety, and success depend on it. These special optics give you the power to see all your surroundings. They're HD vision, special ops. Most sunglasses just make things darker, and in a tactical situation, that can be deadly. Inspired by the needs of our men and women in uniform, Special Ops lets you do things normal sunglasses just can't do. You see your surroundings in high definition with color, contrast, and clarity so sharp you'll never want to be without them. And HD Vision Special Ops reduce glare without darkening your view. Same polycarbonate material used in military aircraft. A high-performance design ideal for active lifestyles. Special Ops offer UV protection, are scratch-resistant, and can survive the harshest conditions. Because no matter where you are or what you do, seeing clearly can save your life. Or give you a tactical advantage even in low light conditions. It's just the clarity of everything around you. It's like it brightens everything up. As far as looking across the field, you can see things very clearly, uh, which, is, which is extremely nice and very important. The lenses are so clear, it's like there's nothing there. Everything just pops. Tactical glasses with similar technology can cost $200 or more. But with this exclusive TV offer, you can get HD Vision Special Ops for $19.99. When you order now, you'll also get our HD Vision Night Ops glasses absolutely free. Perfect for driving at night. HD Vision Night Ops enhance color, clarity, and cut the glare of oncoming headlights. You get the HD Vision Special Ops sunglasses and our Night Ops with professional grade optics for an unbeatable low price. Both pair for just $19.99. Don't wait. Get your Special Ops today. To order, call 1 800 791 9729. That's 1 800 791 9729, or you can go online at hdspecialops.com. Don't delay. Call or click today. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, Call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free, and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. It's starting to feel like a routine, man. I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> it's go time. Situations like this where you really have to come together for the same cause. Hopefully that moment was a step forward. I spoke for all 100 guys on our team, all our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division One sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys got to have me on more often, man. You got to start coming together. We really have a loaded show. Packer and Durham, weekdays, 8 to 10 a.m. on ACCN. On the attack, Sharika Wright, the All-America candidate for Purdue. Last season, 29 and 5, the Boilermakers won the Big Ten tournament, advancing all the way to the Elite Eight in the NCAA tournament before falling to the eventual national champion, Connecticut, 73-64. That was in the East Region. You know, Katie Geralds was 5 of 10 last week against Kansas State, and she hit that little fadeaway jumper. Yes. So that, that little turnaround, kind of like a Larry Bird shot. She missed that one, but that's a sweet shot that she takes. Well, that's their focus. Get her the ball closer to the rim early in this one. And obviously, if Harding's going to guard her, they'll work that matchup hard. 
Harding up high to Curry. Purdue, incidentally, has only attempted two shots. And we're almost five minutes into the game. A whistle and a foul away from the basket. I think this is going to be offensive on the freshman, uh, Brittany Hunter. Indeed. A little push. Well, she's an aggressive player. And the one thing I like, though, about Duke and running their offense, they certainly didn't get back on the defensive end. Nice play by Purdue getting an easy basket, and they needed that. Erica Vilek, the senior out of Lubbock, Texas. She drops in two. She started 100 games at Purdue. But what I like about this passing offense that Duke is running, they're forcing Purdue to play defense. And when you have to play defense for that long a time, towards the end of the game, that wears you down. Curry had a shot of her own, elected to go inside to Hunter, and she missed from close range. Eight to two, the Blue Devils. But Purdue finally on the scoreboard. Top of the key, and the shot won't go by Heikus. And Doris on that possession, Elena Beard switched up on Gerald's, and then you saw Harding on Belek. Well, the size-wise, and the Beard has got to check Gerald's because Harding is, just doesn't have the, the length to guard her. Elena Beard with a bad miss, way off the mark, and a reach-in foul from behind. Tillis, 14-12 left here in the first half. And that's a lazy foul right there, Dave. I mean, she's just standing behind the, the offensive post and reaching in, and a lot of players, and especially at Isis Tillis, being a senior, you don't pick up those kind of fouls. You don't get lazy. So she has to come out. Guest, of course, has to get her on the bench. Because she's quickly into a little bit of foul trouble. Sharika Wright. The turnaround and the shot no good. It rolls up, and Lawless there with a nice follow. Poor defensive possession right there by Duke. And Hunter slow to get up. Yeah, Brittany Hunter just went down. And that was after the shot. Eight to four, the Blue Devils. Well, she's got a sleeve on her knee in this game that we didn't see last week, and she has fought plantar fasciitis. Yeah, in both heels. In both heels. Mm -hmm. But Gail Gessencourt's team, she has fought injuries all preseason, and you see she looks like she steps on Heikus's foot. Goes to challenge, and you're right. Stepped on the right foot of Emily Heikus. It might have been that that right heel because both are right and left, or it could have been a knee. Of course, we have no way of knowing right now, but she obviously stepped on the foot. No foul there. 14.03 left in the first half. You know, at one point in preseason, this Duke team only had, what, six to eight players that they were practicing with. So we had kind of questioned, you know, their timing last week. Well, they weren't playing together, everybody, because of all the injuries, the conditioning factor wasn't there. That's one of the things Gail had talked about. She said, I'm not going to panic if we lose an early game or two because we just haven't had the repetitions that are conducive to great basketball. Hunter is up, but very gingerly, and she's going to be helped to the bench, and I would assume to the training room because she's in obvious pain. Well, and that really puts a hitch in Duke's lineup, too, because you got Misty Bass coming in into the game, and you lose size. Isis Tillis with the two fouls. Now you got Brittany Hunter, whether she comes back or not. And then also Allison Bales, a 6'7 freshman. She has not been playing because of knee injury. And she had off-season knee surgery. Well, they're going to peel off that knee brace that she wears around her right knee. And Winner Whitley is another player who had off-season surgery at 6'2. She's supposed to come back in January. Vicky Crapel into the ballgame, handling the point now for Duke. Beard double team. Purdue running, running that, for Jessica Foley. Purdue running that trap zone, that matchup. And they run the offense beautifully, but Bass can't get it to go. Fresh shot clock here for the Duke Blue Devils. Now, Vicki Crapel in the game, and she's more of an offensive threat from the outside for Duke. As Jessica Foley can shoot that three. She's the sophomore from Australia. Beard fouled. It's something they looked at hard yesterday against the zone. The back door and a lob to, to Elena Beard. The NFL on ESPN is coming away tonight at 8.30 Eastern. Steve Spurrier, Lamar Arrington, and the Washington Redskins head to Miami to take on Ricky Williams and the Dolphins. That's a game also available in stunning high definition on ESPN HD. All starts with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern time. And Steve Spurrier has certainly taken his lumps out in Washington. He's just a ball coach. You know that. That's right. He's just a ball coach. <laughs> Elena Beard, 5'11", a senior from Shreveport. 
Last season averaging 22 points a game, the three-time All-American. Vilek. Beard got a hand on that. She caused the turnover. Deflected away by Elena Beard. Duke on the charge. Curry follows her own miss. Bass up again and a foul on the play. Well, if Duke is going to go anywhere, it's going to be on the defensive end, and that's one thing Gail Gessencourt really stresses. When you've got a player like Elena Beard that comes up with steal after steal after steal and creates offense, Monique Curry misses that shot, but Misty Bass, this is going to be a big game for her. She has struggled because she's had a thumb injury, but she gets a nice rebound underneath and a chance for three. Bass, along with a dislocated thumb, also had knee and toe injuries slow her down before the season ever started. So she's been banged up. And they just lost Brittany Hunter, who remains on the bench for Duke. Right, right to the glass, undaunted. Well, Sharika Wright, you know, again, her size at 5'10", it's amazing that she averages as many points as she did last year. But a lot of it is from the inside until she develops, you know, a little bit more of a face up when she can knock down that 12 to 15 foot and maybe even a three pointer. Teams are going to force her to the outside. Select from the corner. Boy, what a pretty shot. We saw Jamie carrying that first game for Texas. And Erica Vilek has that same kind of mentality. Vilek has her first four points of the game over the last couple of minutes. She averaged 14 points a game last season. Not a good pass by Monique Curry at all. Gerald's the freshman out in front of the pack to lay it in. And the momentum very clearly turning in Purdue's direction. Teamed underneath, shot it underneath the backboard. Harding with it. There's Beard. Thought about a three. It's Foley instead. Not there. Beard with a tap. Beautifully done. But then she had it stolen from behind. Vilek with the steal. Hicks ahead to Geralds who can shoot from anywhere on the court. Pass it to Lawless got it. Well, a dangerous cross court pass, but by spreading the defense, you get an easy shot in the post. Lawless does a nice job running the floor. Christy Curry talked about the two freshmen, Lawless and Geralds. She said they did not back down in that Kansas State game. They will get a lot of minutes this season. Whistle and a foul on Lindsey Hicks, the 6'1 senior of Purdue, but the Boilermakers have come back. And pulled within one point now after getting off what one shot in the first four minutes of the game. So Christy Curry has her team on the march here. Bass stepping out, Tillis back in despite a little foul trouble. She's playing with two. I don't think this is going to be a Purdue team that as the year wears on, if they get down double digits because there are four seniors in the lineup, I don't think you'll see panic. I think they're. They're tested. They've been to an Elite Eight. They've been to a Final Four. And Christy Terry talks about that in her practices. Don't worry about the runs. Teams are going to get runs on, as a matter of fact, how she was talking about Duke. Don't panic. We don't have to panic. We'll be right in there. Just be poised. And they've got a great guard with Erica Bellet to keep that poise. Timeout with 11.32 to play in the first half. Purdue pulling back to within three now as Duke has the lead, 15-12 in the second half of the Jimmy B Women's Classic. It's a war zone out there, and your car's paint gets attacked every day by acid rain, damaging rocks, scorching sun, leaving your paint dull and faded. Now you can clean, shine, and protect with Shine Armor, the amazing new car polish that's made with super nano ceramic, guaranteed to be the greatest shine and protection you've ever used. Just spray it on to restore your car's finish with ease. It's not a wax, but a high-tech ceramic shield that instantly repels dirt and 
debris. Nothing sticks, and water just dances right off. Even a fried egg won't stick. Amazing. No matter where you drive, everything cleans up just like that. Shine Armor with Nano Ceramic is made in the USA, and it's not just a little better, it's a lot better, making all other polishes obsolete. The secret? Our exclusive ceramic formula that fills in micro cracks and crevices to create an ultra durable protective barrier against harsh elements. Even fire can't break the protection. And nuts and bolts just bounce off without a scratch. Bumpers, trim, mirrors, glass, and more. You'll get a beautiful showroom shine with Shine Armor. Professional ceramic finishes can cost you thousands, but act now and get Shine Armor for only $19.99. But wait, we'll also send you two premium microfiber towels for a perfect, easy application in just minutes. Absolutely free. And we're not done. We'll double this offer and send you a second set. That's enough Shine Armor for your cars, trucks, boats, RVs, and more. Just pay a separate fee, and we'll ship it to you free. That's two bottles of Shine Armor, four microfiber towels, and free shipping. But you have to call or click now. To order, call 1-800-496-5817 or go online at buyshinearmor.com. Don't delay. Call 1-800-496-5817 or go online at buyshinearmor.com. Order now. It's starting to feel like a routine, man. I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> it's go time. Situations like this where you really have to come together for the same cause. Hopefully oh, that moment was a step forward. I spoke for all 100 guys on our team. All our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division One sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys got to have me on more often, man. You got to start coming together. We really have a loaded show. Dr. Endura, weekdays, 8 to 10 a.m. on ACCN. Brett Favre, legendary quarterback. Jerry Rice, legendary wide receiver. When legends play, they wear CopperFit Advanced Back Pro. CopperFit's best-selling compression back support just got better with new double-band adjustable supports for customizable compression when you need it most. That's what I'm talking about. Four built-in stabilizing supports designed to improve posture and help reduce lower back stress and strain. You have back pain and it's affecting your everyday life. Do something. Since I put this on, I feel so much better. The core is the most important Absolutely. thing. To know that I'm stabilized here. Whatever I'm doing, I can give it 100%. Call 1-800-814-4139 or on the web at advancedbackpro.com for only $19.99. This does feel good. That's what I've been saying. You think it was fair? It was fun. <laughs> Copper fit. Live limitless. Gerald's up high with a three-pointer as the freshman drills a tray to tie the game. And Purdue has caught fire after a very cold start. Gerald's a big part of that. She has five points. Well, Katie Gerald's out of Beach Grove, Indiana. One of her favorite players, Reggie Miller, who can shoot that three also. Just a little bit. Absolutely. UCLA guy. You had to get that <laughs> That's in, didn't right. you? Your Bruins stick together. <laughs> Fully double team. Purdue's done that very well. They trap and a turnover. But Gerald's plays outstanding defense. That's twice now she's been involved in making plays along the baseline at length. She could play the top of the zone for Christy Curry. She could play the bottom. Very versatile. Duke has started to turn the ball over to rapid rate now. Half a dozen for them. And you see where Purdue has caught fire. Seven out of 11. Duke has cooled off. Well, Christy Curry doesn't like to play zone an awful lot. It's a matchup. She likes to go man, but. They are making things difficult on the offensive end for Duke. Shot clock down to nine, oh. but a nice, nice touch there by Aaron Lawless, the freshman. West Lafayette, they're going to enjoy those two young women for quite some time. Now 
now with four points, and Purdue has the lead, 17-15. Well, and that's a good move by Harding right now because Duke in this offense, even though they missed a the shot, they got the good look because they had dribble penetration in the seams and then the kick out. Gerald's left open again, back iron that time, and it came out to Elena Beard. Brittany Hunter, by the way, has left the bench with that knee problem, apparent knee problem. They are indeed, we're told, working on her right knee in the locker room. But ever since she left, it's been a different game. Now Purdue's gone back into the man-to-man. -man. They're switching things up, and Crapo against Balek on a man-to-man -man situation knocks down that three. Well, what does Gail do as soon as they go 2-3 zone? She puts her two shooters in, Foley and Crapo. They spread them on opposite sides of the floor trying to stretch the defense. Now it's up to those two players to make shots. Now how about Duke going back into his zone? Balek from the corner right there. Mm. Tell you. zone. Valek is a tough-minded individual, similar to me to Jamie Carey, who we saw in game one, willing to do the things it takes to win games. Valek now with seven points. Elena Beard draws a lot of attention when she touches it. Foley lets fly the three and nothing but net. Well, right now with these two teams playing zones, both of them have shooters from the outside, and they're getting the open look for the shot. Elena Beard certainly playing smart, very savvy basketball. She's not forcing any shots. The offense is going elsewhere. Lawless hurried it. I would think both coaches, though, would stress in the timeouts against that zone that they've got to put pressure on the shooters. They've got to know where the shooters are. Tillis with a three, front rims it. Belek looking up the floor, goes to Sharika Wright. Quickly, baseline, contact. It'll go the other way. You're absolutely right, Annie, when you're talking about how Duke will take the charge better than any team around. And that's a tough call right there. Even though Isis Tillis comes down, though, on it, Dave, I think she's far underneath the basket, so it's a tough call on right. You can see that she's standing underneath, and I, I think that's tough for an offensive player when a defensive player stands right underneath the basket. I agree, and I know you're not a proponent of that dotted line that the NBA has, and there are obviously vast differences between the NBA, but when you're underneath the cylinder or even close, you can't reward poor defense. You're in jail under there. The offensive player should get to the free throw line on that. Harding, dribble oh, no. drive. Blocked by Gerald's, but the return up and in by Beard. Let it come to you. That's all Gail Guest, of course, is asking Elena Beard to do. Sometimes you can want something too bad. And uh, Elena Beard, last Sunday versus Texas, looked like she wanted it too badly. The defense that Duke is running is a 1-3-1. Right now they've got Tillis in the middle of it, and it looks like it's a 2-3. It kind of rotates back and forth. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now to give you deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but also my mattress topper sheets and so much more. For example, you can get body pillows regularly, $89.99, only $29.99 with your promo code. With our 60-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Sleep well, America! For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Oh no, your lawn is a nightmare with pet spots and dead spots everywhere. Laying sod is a backbreaking chore and spreading seed is a pain. Birds eat the seed and it's washed away by rain. Not anymore. Now there's GrowTrax, the amazing professional grade grass growing technology. You simply and watch it for a great looking lawn you're going to love.
Look closer. GrowTrax merges seed science with high-tech turf technology embedding thousands of seeds into a biodegradable, high-absorption compost fabric that retains water so seeds stay moist and secure while keeping birds at bay and heavy rain washouts away. This is the same revolutionary rollout fast-growth formula used by elite golf courses and resorts, and now it's finally available in a residential roll for your lawn. Just roll, water, and watch it grow, and you'll see why GrowTrax received the prestigious Best New Product Award. GrowTrax absorbs and holds up to six times its own weight, so you water less and grow more. Under ideal growing conditions, GrowTrax can simply grow past other grass seeds. Get rid of pet spots like magic. Erase worn footpaths. Grow grass in the shade and under trees with ease. And using GrowTrax on hills and slopes is a breeze. Watch as we place GrowTrax directly on concrete without a speck of soil, and in days it grows like crazy. It's like grass seed on steroids. It's award-winning and American-made to grow anywhere in the direct sun or shade. And now GrowTrax in this convenient 25-square-foot roll is yours for just $19. But wait, order now and we'll supersize your order to our large 50 square foot roll at no extra charge. That's double the coverage and you get it all at the Landscapers Direct discounted price of just $19.95. And for large lots and really big jobs, roll on over to our website for great GrowTrax bonus deals and discounts. Call or click now to get your supersized roll of revolutionary GrowTrax so you can roll, water, and watch it grow. Here's how to order. Call 1 800 510 That's 1 800. 800- Five one zero three four eight six, or go to buygrowtracks.com. like this where you really have to come together for the same cause. Hopefully that moment was a step forward. I spoke for all 100 guys on our team, all our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division One sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys got to have me on more often, man. You got to start coming together. We really have a loaded show. Dr. and Durek, weekdays, 8 to 10 a.m. on ACCN. Fleck is certainly leading the way. Her shot. They are 8 out of 11 since starting the game, 1 for 5. And also, Brittany Hunter has left the game for Duke. And she's actually brought crutches over to the bench, Doris, with her. Well, both team physicians, Dr. Allison Talk, who's the surgeon, and Jeff Bystommer, said that she will not return. It is a right knee sprain. All right, that's all we know at this point. I'm sure that's the first diagnosis. And they're going to take a longer look, sure that x-rays, or perhaps an MRI are in the future. We well, no, hope that's it, just a sprain. No question, a huge loss right now for Duke in this game, and, and who knows what's going to happen the rest of the season, but Gail Gessencourt is, is not a stranger to having players go down and, and having adversity on her teams, and they will make the adjustments. When you've got a player of the year in Elena Beard, they've got to step up. Well, Brittany Hunter, the Parade Magazine National Player of the Year out of Columbus, Ohio. A big, big signing by guest, of course. Grateful with it. Off to Curry. She's coming back from her own knee. Problems. Harding underneath on a great feed from Beer. When you're right, Monique Curry is going to be a key to this team this year, this Duke Blue Devil team, as far as what she does. It's the first, second game she's playing with the sleeve, and the first game we saw them play last week against Texas, she had the big brace on that left knee, but she has a lot more confidence. She's not in the in 100% of shape and probably not 100% mentally as far as testing that knee. I don't know how many of them are 100% for Duke, maybe one or two. Shot clock at five. Webb on the baseline, guarded by Beard. She ran right into Elena Beard and just lost it. Well, Duke right now playing good position defense. They're not reaching for the ball. They're moving their feet, and they're waiting for Purdue to make the mistake. Nine turnovers for the Boilermakers. It's Duke by seven. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Crapo lining up the three. Beard picks off the rebound. What a feed to Curry. She'll go to the line to shoot two, but Elena Curry. Uh, Elena Beard feeding Curry for the second time. And she's made a couple of beautiful passes, those two hooking up. 
And Beard continues to actually act like a point guard the first three games of her season. And as Doris said in the very beginning of this game, Beth Jones having a difficult time matching up against Elena Beard. Well, moments to go here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, this is something that they worked on hard. I want you to watch this side of your screen because what Duke worked on in practice yesterday against this zone was attacking along the baseline and getting some screen. And here's the point guard play you were talking about. Elena Beard at a lot of moments on the floor is the best decision maker Duke has. She finds their real point guard Harding. But I'll tell you this, WNBA scouts are looking at her as a one guard in certain instances. Well, in two games, she has 16 assists. And she told me before the season started that she has worked a lot on her right hand dribbling. And she's always been a good passer. When you had Georgia Schweitzer, the two-time ACC Player of the Year, playing behind her and learning from her, who's still on the bench as an assistant coach now, Elena Beard has just grown and matured as a leader on this Duke team. Monique Curry, the MVP of the 2002 ACC Tournament Final at the line. Purdue has yet to shoot Duke 9 out of 10. This is what specializes in. I mean, Curry in particular, outstanding at getting to the free throw line. And when your offense is struggling, a player who can get foul shots down can turn the tide of a game. That's why Curry was so missed last year. As a freshman, she led the ACC in free throw attempts. Sharika Wright took a peek at that shot clock, which is down to 12. Gerald's off to the left. Little fadeaway off the glass. It's not there. Wright battling for the rebound. Got it back to Gerald's. And a new shot clock as well. Good patience by Purdue. Purdue so far at 56% shooting. Duke just 33%. So they've needed those foul shots. A near turnover. Great look there from Vilek. She picked up the loose ball and found an open player underneath. More great college basketball comes to a Monday night on ESPN2. Roy Williams, number 10 North Carolina Tar Heels, hosts Davidson at 7 o'clock Eastern. Then on ESPN Tuesday night at 9, don't miss top five teams, number three Michigan State, number five Kansas, all part of college basketball's Feast Week. Presented by eBay and Doris, you're going to be in Kansas. Can't wait. Allen Fieldhouse, very excited. Paul Davis from Michigan State, an outstanding young player. That will be fun and new eras in both places, the Roy Williams era in North Carolina. And, of course, Bill Self. And it would be strange not to see Roy Williams in Kansas. Florida, 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 Illinois. You're right, and Nick Collison's jersey is going to be retired yes. at halftime there. Great Kansas Jayhawk. And Duke right now the 28 to 21 lead over Purdue. 541 left here. Duke on a run. Outscoring Purdue 10 to 1 the last three minutes and 17 seconds. I like Purdue's defense. They're talking on defense. Traveling. Curry gives it over to Purdue. You get a defensive team communicating to each other, getting to know where. The offensive players are on the floor where you've got the help. He's at 1-3-1 by Duke. And what is open on that, certainly not the wings, but that's, Gerald's taking that outside shot. What's open against the 1-3-1 is the high post area and then the down on the, the blocks. Gerald's with an outside shot and then some. Well, she's settling for the jumper, though, and I think she can go off the bounce, attack the gaps of the zone, be a little more patient. But not a lot of teams play a 1-3-1, so they're not sure on how to play against it, even though Christy Curry's team did practice against it because lots of times it comes up into a matchup, and you'll see Isis Tillis even up on top sometimes. Let's see if Purdue tries to get the ball to Sharika Wright. She's been held to two points in the first half. That's her on the baseline, drawing contact. Over a career, she's averaged seven free throws for an entire three-plus year career. Sharika Wright gets to the free throw line. Well, she will here, too. One of the many Player of the Year candidates that we've seen over the last couple of weekends. Well, Sharika Wright, her numbers are incredible at Purdue as far as what she's done. She's number six in all-time points. Number 12 on rebounds, number one in free throws made, as you said, and attempted. 
And not a bad free throw shooter at that. Last year she was 74% from the floor, but has worked on becoming better. Two fouls, Monique Curry heads to the bench. Purdue with a little press of their own. Harding trying to break it. Lawless could not get over in time, but a turnover anyway. And Gail Guestin Court, I cannot believe it. Well, she talked about three things. She said, we need to be disciplined in all aspects. No needless fouls, limit our turnovers, and let's run our sets through. They really haven't done any one of those three things exceptionally well in this first half. Well, I thought early on they, they were running their, their offensive set. They were very being very patient and talked about the five-pass rule, and, and I thought they were making Purdue play that defense, but Chrissy Curry's gone to the freshman, and they call another charge against Purdue, and Chrissy Curry holding their emotions in. Well, how much of this do you think is Duke by reputation is going to get some of those charges because they do it so well and they make such a point out of it? Mm. Perhaps they're getting the benefit of the doubt here. Well, the thing is, too, though, when you practice it and you know how to do it, you should get those calls, sure. even though you may be known for it and officials are going to look for it. They'll be aware of it. But you know what? If you're going to get position, you should get the calls. Bass turning it over on the double team. Wright pushes it. Tillis got Oh, nice, back. nice. Foul before the shot, so no basket. Three on Tillis. That's and right. Isis Tillis picks up her third. Lena Beard's going to check back in. So Isis will head to the bench here with 4.06 to play in the first half. They've got to get her out. You know, you really have to like how Purdue is coming into this game. They, as you said, they weren't scoring early on, and maybe their defense wasn't quite as settled, but they have just settled in to as far as how they're controlling the tempo of this game right now. Well, Sharika right at the line, and she's one who can certainly control a game. She hit for 25 against Connecticut in the NCAA tournament last March in a losing cause, but against an outstanding team, indeed the national champ, she kind of lit them up. And there you see the free throw attempts last season. <laughs> About nine a game. That's almost ridiculous. It's that quick first step she's got. It's real long, almost like a European. Foley didn't take the three, drives the lane. Left-handed, not there for her, but Beard controls it. Now, Purdue may not have the size that they did last year, losing 6'5", Mary Jo Noon to graduation, but they certainly are more athletic with Lawless and Gerald's in there. Pretty scoop shot by Harding, but it's spun away, and yet another second effort. The three not there. She's on the line and turning it over to Duke. So Gerald stepped right on the baseline and gave it over to the Blue Devils. And they have a five-point lead and a lot of second efforts. For a close shave, you need to get a razor and lather up. For a quick shave on the go, you need to settle for an electric. But what if you really want both? Nick Fulton here with the newest addition to our tactical line, the Bell & Howell Tax Shaver. Designed with the needs of our military in mind, Tax Shaver gives you a quick, razor smooth shave whether you're at home or on the go. It even has a built-in trimmer for sideburns and beards. And it works wet or dry for a great shave in even the harshest conditions. That's right, the tax shaver is completely waterproof. In fact, you could even use a tax shaver underwater and still get a great shave. Navy guys, tax shaver is small and compact so it slips easily into any pocket. Yet it also has three powerful rotary heads that can easily take on even the coarsest hair. To prove it, I'm gonna do something I never do. Shave. As you can see, it easily handled even my stubborn stubble. Now that's what I call military top. So let's review. Tack Shaver gives you a quick, razor smooth shave, features a built-in trimmer, works wet or dry, even underwater, and has three powerful shaving heads. I mean, there's just nothing like it on the market today. Act now to get your tax shaver for this special TV price of just $29.99 with free shipping. It's the only shaver that features genuine Bell & Howell precision and quality and is backed by our 10-year warranty. That's right. Call or click today to get your tax shaver and we'll ship it to you free. Act now to get the Bell & Howell tax shaver at this special TV price. Here's how to order. 
to order call 1-800-282-8318 or go to TaxShaver.com. That's 1-800-282-8318 or you can order online at TaxShaver.com. I got things I want to do, but student loans were holding me back. Credible.com helped me save $600 a month with a great rate. Now I can go do what I want to do. Visit Credible.com to see how much you could save on your student loans. It's starting to feel like a routine, man. I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> it's go time. Situations like this where you really have to come together for the same cause. Hopefully that moment was a step forward. I spoke for all 100 guys on our team. All our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division One sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys got to have me on more often, man. You got to start coming together. We really have a loaded show. Packer and Durham, weekdays, 8 to 10 a.m. on ACCN. Brett Favre, legendary quarterback. Jerry Rice, legendary wide receiver. When legends play, they wear CopperFit Advanced Back Pro. CopperFit's best-selling compression back support just got better with new double-band adjustable supports for customizable compression when you need it most. That's what I'm talking about. Four built-in stabilizing supports designed to improve posture and help reduce lower back stress and strain. You have back pain, and it's affecting Since I put this... I feel so much better. The core is the most important Absolutely. thing. To know that I'm stabilized here. Whatever I'm doing, I can give it 100%. Call 1-800-814-4139 or on the web at advancedbackpro.com for only $19.99. This does feel good. That's what I've been saying. You think it was fair? It was fun. <laughs> Copper fit. Live limitless. Duke really pounding away on the second chance points. And they're getting all the loose balls and the loose rebounds. So they're getting two and three shots every time down the floor now. And that's the kind of thing that really gets under the skin of a coach. Only one effort this time, Foley got it. And Christy Curry felt that with the athletes that Duke has in yesterday's practice, said they're going to jump over us. They are very good leapers. And you know what? We just have to block out and get a body on somebody. She did some drills yesterday in practice. That's all they worked on was blocking out. And they are struggling right now on the defensive end to get a block out. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult also in a zone. Brittany Hunter with a little bit of a grin. That's nice to see. She was in tears about 10 or 15 minutes ago after she came back from the trainer's room. And they talked about the sprained right knee. And look who's at the free throw line. <laughs> Sharika Wright. Wright who averaged 18.9 points a game last season. Now a senior out of Copperas Cove, Texas. And one of the great players in the women's game today. Can she take the Purdue Boilermakers back to the Final Four? Duke by five here, coming up on three minutes to play in the first half. Now, why Jessica Foley dribbled the ball and didn't go anywhere, she really put herself in a situation. Switching up their man-to-man -man defense now. Shot clock at eight. Harding sees it, sees an open Foley. Oh. Three-pointer, and that with a shot clock dwindling down. Well, last time she went off the triple drive, and she is known as a three-point specialist. The thunder from down under, they call it. From Victoria, Australia, now with ten points. Everybody on this Duke team is a high school All-American, except Jessica Foley, who is from Australia, and Dana Morgan, a walk-on. Oh, good trap. See, they're just picking spots to change their defense, Dave. The trap comes, they don't react well to it. Foley and Crapel on that trap. The NFL and ESPN is coming away tonight at 8.30 Eastern. Steve Spurrier, Lamar Arrington, and the Washington Redskins go to Miami to take on Ricky Williams and the Dolphins. That's a game also available in stunning high definition on ESPN HD. That all starts with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern Time. The cross-court Crapel over to Foley. 
stolen away by Jones, and she triggers out to the left. Well, right now, Foley is just taking one dribble and getting herself in trouble the last time, two times she's had the ball before she hit that three. And when you take a dribble, it's supposed to take you somewhere. You don't stand there, take a dribble, and pick it up because now teams can defend you. Now you've got to play to your strengths, too, Ann. I mean, I don't think Gail Gessen, of course, wants her attacking off the, the bounce. If you need to make a dribble to get someplace or make a pass, fine. No, but it's an obvious bad habit that she has. Mm -hmm. Katie right. Gerald, she sees the floor so well. A terrific pass underneath for an easy two. Back to the 2-3 zone. So Purdue and Duke both switching their defenses, trying to get the other team off balance. Well, a lot of it has to do, too, with made baskets, missed baskets, and how they'll switch things up. Now, Elena Beard trying to find a seam to step through, and Hike is falling down to create the charge. Beard picks up her second foul, 132 left in the half. This is game number two of the Jimmy B Women's Classic, fueled by Pontiac. Number six against number four. Dave O'Brien, Annie Myers, and Doris Burke, thanks so much for joining us inside the RBC Center. Gorgeous building that the North Carolina State men and women get to play their home games in. Now, a great advantage for Purdue. They've got the height out there. They take the outside shot, but really Duke in a position where they're, they've got a small team. You've got Isis Tillis in foul trouble, Brittany Hunter on the bench. They don't have the size. Monique Curry is on the bench. And so Misty Bass is in the game, and this is a small Duke lineup. Crapel long distance and got it. Vicki Crapel with a three ball. After the loss to Texas, Gail Guestencourt has told Vicki Crapel, you hit mo three more three pointers than Jamie Carey last year. And she goes, I did? She goes, look for your shot and take the threes. Jamie Carey, terrific guard for Texas, led them to a win over NC State in game one of the classic. She scored 23 points. Lawless can't get the turnaround. So 26 seconds left in the half. The Blue Devils will literally hold for one more shot. Leading it 36 to 27. Well, as you said, Elena Beard has not gotten the points in this half, but she's been instrumental for Duke. Crapel left open again. Got good rotation, but couldn't cash in on the three. Gerald's will heave it. It'll count if it goes, it will not. And so that's our score at halftime. Duke 36. And Purdue 27, two top 10 teams going at it here. And Christy Curry, she believes her team could win this. She implored her team on the bench during the first half to go out there and get after Duke. Let's go to Doris Burke. Well, Gail, you talked in, coming into this game about being disciplined. You have a nine point lead, but were you as disciplined as you had hoped to be? Uh, no, we weren't. And uh, I felt like we could get some better shots than we did early on. When they run their zone, they get real wide. We need to do a better job penetrating the gaps, reversing the ball. We're just a little bit impatient on the offensive end. Brittany Hunter, what is her status right now? Oh, uh, we don't know. I, I can't say right now. I, I doubt we'll have her for the second half, so we've got some other players that need to step up. Good luck, Gail. First rule of special ops, be aware of your surroundings. Complete visual clarity, because survival, safety, and success depend on it. These special optics give you the power to see all your surroundings. Their HD vision, special ops. Most sunglasses just make things darker, and in a tactical situation, that can be deadly. Inspired by the needs of our men and women in uniform, special ops lets you do things normal sunglasses just can't do. You see your surroundings in high definition with color, contrast, and clarity so sharp, you'll never want to be without them. And HD vision, special ops, reduce glare without darkening your view. Same polycarbonate material used in military aircraft. A high performance design ideal for active lifestyles. Special Ops offer UV protection, are scratch resistant, and can survive the harshest conditions. Because no matter where you are or what you do, seeing clearly can save your life. Or give you a tactical advantage even in low light conditions. It's just the clarity of everything around you. It's like it brightens everything up. As far as looking across the field, you can see things very clearly, uh, which, is, which is extremely nice and very important. The lenses are so clear, it's like there's nothing there. Everything just pops. Tactical glasses with similar technology can cost $200 or more. But with this exclusive TV offer, you can get HD Vision Special Ops for $19.99. When you order now, you'll also get our HD Vision Night Ops glasses absolutely free. Perfect for driving at night. HD Vision Night Ops enhance color, clarity, and cut the glare of oncoming headlights. 
you get the HD Vision Special Ops sunglasses and our Night Ops with professional grade optics for an unbeatable low price. Both pair for just $19.99. Don't wait. Get your Special Ops today. To order, call 1 800 791 9729. That's 1 800 791 9729, or you can go online at hdspecialops.com. Don't delay, call or click today. Black Lives Matter. Simple as that. Silent is no longer an option. It's time to be part of the movement. Progress has been too slow. There's no place for racism and social injustice anywhere. And just because you haven't lived it, doesn't mean it isn't real. The ball is in our court. To put in the hard work for change. And lead the tough conversations about racism. We see you. We hear you. We stand with you. Black Lives Matter. Plus, it's starting to feel like a routine, man. I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> it's go time. Situations like this where you really have to come together for the same cause. Hopefully that moment was a step forward. I spoke for all 100 guys on our team, all our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division One sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys got to have me on more often, man. You got to start coming together. We really have a loaded show. Kathy Hicks had three fouls in the first half. She's starting in the second half. And Beth Jones, who was 4 of 4 from three-point range against Kansas State, missing that shot right there. She does not have one point, and that was the first shot she took in this game. Well, I think obviously a focus defensively if you're Duke is get out on shooters. And it was Jones who played superbly against Kansas State, set the tone early. They took her away. I mean, credit Duke scout on that. Elena Beard, pretty quiet first half, at least in terms of total points, just half a dozen, but spread down. And also six rebounds, so she did a little bit of everything. Shot clock was down to six, and a push off there by Beard, an offensive foul. And that's a perfect example. Elena Beard, pretty much as a player, when she got the ball at the high post, she had a chance to go right, she went back to her left. When you're comfortable and strong in a position, you go that way. And she went left, and she didn't go all the way, and she got herself in trouble. A yeah, good solid line with six and six and four. But you're right. I mean, has she improved? That's a big question. Good inside look for Hykus. Well, she can't afford to pick up that foul. She tried to come over and help out, but she can't pick up another foul that early. Emily Hykus with two points, and Beard gets double team. She's trying to fight her way out of it, literally throwing an elbow there. Curry was left open. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Uh, Monique Curry, just a solid offensive player. Mixes in and out. How about that turnaround? That's the Curry of the old. And she looks a lot more relaxed in this game. She's not forcing it. The leg from the tip by Curry. And Harding looking to run for Duke. That's Beard open on the wing. A three-pointer. Well, and Beard, too, can put you to sleep sometimes. We said in that first half, she didn't look to take the outside shot, and people questioned her outside three-point ability, but she has worked a lot on that, and she was very comfortable on that shot. Elena Beard lining up a three. You leave her open, she can stick in the dagger, and the All-American candidate gets three here. I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now to give you deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but also my mattress topper sheets and so much more. For example, you can get body pillows regularly, $89.99, only $29. Code. With 60 day money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Sleep well, America! For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Oh no, your lawn is a nightmare with pet spots and dead spots everywhere. Laying sod is a back-breaking chore and spreading seed is a pain. Eat the seed and 
washed away by rain. Not anymore. Now there's GrowTrax, the amazing professional-grade grass-growing technology you simply roll, water, and watch it grow for a great-looking lawn you're going to love. Look closer. GrowTrax merges seed science with high-tech turf technology and a biodegradable high absorption compost fabric that retains water so seeds stay moist and secure the rain washout same revolutionary rollout fast growth formula used by elite golf courses and resorts and now it's finally available in a residential role for your lawn just roll water and watch it grow and you'll see why grow tracks received the prestigious best new product award grow tracks absorbs and holds up to six times its own weight so you water less and grow more under ideal growing conditions grow Simply grow past their grass seeds. Erase warm grow grass in the shade and under trees with ease. And you can trees. Watch as grow tracks directly on concrete without a speck of soil. And in days, it grows like crazy. It's like grass seed on steroids. It's award-winning and American-made to grow anywhere in the direct sun or shade. And now grow tracks in this convenient 25-square-foot roll is yours for just $19.95. But wait, order now and we'll supersize your order to our large 50-square-foot roll at no extra charge. That's double the coverage and you get it all at the Landscaper's Direct Discounted Price of just $19.95. And for large lots and really big jobs, roll on over to our website for great GrowTrax bonus deals and discounts. Call or click now to get your supersized roll of revolutionary GrowTrax so you can roll, water, and watch it grow. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-510-3486. That's 1-800-510-3486 or go to buygrowtrax.com. Routine, man. I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> it's go time. Situations like this where you really have to come together for the same cause. Hopefully that moment was a step forward. I spoke for all 100 guys on our team, all our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division I sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys got to have me home more often, man. You got to start coming together. In Durham, weekdays, 8 to 10 a.m. on ACCN. G13 now streaming on Disney Plus. Duke has run out to a 41-29 lead here in the second half. Duke head coach Gail Guestencourt sat down with us and talked about playing in the Jimmy V Classic and what it means to her. It's an honor and a privilege, and I think every one of us is, has had someone uh, near and dear to us that has been touched by cancer. Um, and if we haven't, we will over the course of our lifetime. And um, I think we we are very um, honored to have any any part that that could play in helping with the research to, to try and and cure this deadly disease. Standing by right now, if you'd like to make a pledge to the Jimmy V Foundation, one eight hundred for Jimmy V. Jimmy V Women's Classic here in Raleigh, North Carolina, at the RBC Center. A little foul right there, mid court. Curry pushing on Vilek as she tried to race on by. That's number four. One thing Gail Gesson for has talked about coming into this game was taking the ball out of Erica Vilek, trying to double team trap her. And there's a bump by Elena Beard, even though it's a back court. Erica Vilek keeping control of the basketball. And really, Beard right now cannot play defense. I mean, she's just got to play position, just keep herself in the game. I thought it was a bad ball, but honestly, I thought it was a backcourt violation. Curry with a pull-up pop, not there for her. So a 10-point lead now for Duke. Attacking the basket right, going right there to the rack. That's twice now. They go right inside and attack Duke. Why not? They're in foul trouble. So Hicks and then right to go right at their weak spot. And Gail Gaston better be careful here. And Annie 
about 17 and a half minutes left here in the second half. Elena Beard is still on the floor with four fouls. What do you think about this? Uh, I, yeah, I don't question Gail Gilson, of course. You're going to see her come off the <laughs> There you go. <laughs> But I, think I don't you think have to take her out. This you much do, time. but I, I don't think you keep her out as long as maybe some people think four or five minutes left to go in the game. A lot of it depends on what happens as far as Duke sustaining this lead, because you don't want to have that kind of player off the floor with that caliber, because they are smart enough to know to stay in a game. Believe me, I was there many a time. <laughs> Trouble stuff. Bass pushing along with Hikus. Those two going after each other, Emily Hike. And Misty Bass, who's a 6'3 sophomore. Now, in the first half, we saw the officials let the game be a little physical. We saw some charges, and we'll see if the second half changes, if it's a little bit uh, tighter, and if the players can adjust. Aisha Stillis checks it in. I think you got to go to Foley here. She's been the most potent offensive player. Well, she had 10 points in the first half. She gave him a great lift off the bench. In fact, led all scorers at halftime. And here she is on the wing. They beat Bass on the roll. That's pretty. That's just reversing the basketball and allowing Bass to get a good angle at the rim and the passer a good pass into the post. Pretty. Exactly what Gail Gessenkor has told you going into halftime. We need to be more patient. And Lawless quietly putting together. Aaron Law to the 6'2 freshman. It's the Jimmy V Women's Classic, fueled by Pontiac. Number six, Purdue. Number four, Duke. Raleigh, North Carolina. This is game two of a doubleheader. Texas one going away against NC State in game number one. Harding forcing the issue. She got five. The two things going into halftime, reversing the basketball on offense and also the penetration, whether it be against a man-to-man -man or a zone. And Harding takes advantage of a wide open lane. She sees that Purdue is not set up and Hicks picking up, or Hicks, 43 Webb in the game, but picking up that foul and going inside the lane, getting dribble penetration. Duke is going to score more points, at least get to the free throw line if they're inside the lane. They put pressure on the back line defenders. How good a help defense team is Purdue? And Harding has the ability off the dribble drive to test that. Lindsay Harding. She's a sophomore out of Houston, Texas. Actually broke the pinky finger on her non-shooting hand. Her left hand, four balls. And Although about six or seven practices before the first game, Tillis on the follow couldn't get it. You know, Christy Curry has four starters on the bench. Beck, Jones, Hicks, and Hicks. And she's going with a young team. Right, the only starter. There's Wright pulling up and getting it. Yeah, they're being aggressive on the offensive end. I like that attack mentality. Use your quickness, use your ability to get to the free throw line. Now, we talked about this being a revenge game for Duke. In the championship game, Coach Carol of the team of Purdue. And Duke is 12 and 1 in rematch games. The only game that they lost trying to rematch was Connecticut. Lines lawless. Paint it rolled. Fights for it. Sabrina Keys trying to come up with the ball, but it's Monique Curry. Gail Guest, of course, wanted some contact there. One foul. She's not have it various times today. Been right in the faces. Good range. Foul goes to the line. Well, this is one team where Bass physically has the advantage. Her shoulder, her upper body strength, just her thickness is presenting all kinds of problems for Purdue. And the star, Lena Beard, on the bench with four fouls, but playing the role of cheerleader. Well, and down low, Katie Geralds just cannot get inside Misty Bass. Christy Curry not very happy with that situation because Geralds knows she did not get inside position because of the ball rotation by Duke in reversing it. Bass, 10 points now. And Duke has lengthened its halftime lead, which is nine. And when we come back, we'll talk about the rematch. We'll talk about the first time they met in the championship game, Duke and Purdue.
It's a war zone out there, and your car's paint gets attacked every day by acid rain, damaging rocks, scorching sun, leaving your paint dull and faded. Now you can clean, shine, and protect with Shine Armor, the amazing new car polish that's made with super nano ceramic, guaranteed to be the greatest shine and protection you've ever used. Just spray it on to restore your car's finish with ease. It's not a wax, but a high-tech ceramic shield that instantly repels dirt and debris. Nothing sticks, and water just dances right off. Even a fried egg won't stick. Amazing. No matter where you drive, everything cleans up just like that. Shine Armor with Nano Ceramic is made in the USA, and it's not just a little better, it's a lot better, making all other polishes obsolete. The secret? Our exclusive ceramic formula that fills in micro cracks and crevices to create an ultra-durable protective elements. Even Fire can't break the protection. Bounce off with bumpers, rim, mirrors, glass, and more. You'll get a beautiful showroom shine with Shine Armor. Professional ceramic finishes can cost you thousands, but act now and get $19.99. Wait, we'll also send you two premium microfiber towels for a perfect, easy application in just minutes. Absolutely free. And we're not done. We'll double this offer and send you a second set. That's enough Shine Armor for your cars, trucks, boats, RVs, and more. Just pay a separate fee, and we'll ship it to you free. That's two bottles of Shine Armor, four microfiber towels, and free shipping. But you have to call or click now. To order, call 1-800-496-7 or go online to buyshinearmor.com. Call 1-800-496-7 or go online to buyshinearmor.com. Time. Situations like this where you the same cause. All 100 guys on our, all our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division One sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys gotta have me on more often, man. You gotta start coming together. We really have it loaded. Durant, Durant, 8 to 10 a.m. on ACCN. When your hands hurt, you can't function until now. Introducing the new Copperfit Compression Gloves with Sure Grip Technology to give you more power, more control, and more agility than ever. Copper infused compression fabric. Performance glove that and pain point stiffness. And new Sure Grip Strong non it's important. For magic, these things, I don't know what it is. Because it works. Really? Joint soreness. Money back. Call three. Or for only $19.99. Order right now and your shipping is free. While I'm wearing this, I do not have any pain. I can use it on the keyboard. I can use my phone. I love this glove. Ask for it by name. Copperfit Compression Gloves. It's batted away. And zone for the blue. Since the an 8 4 run, looking for Misty Banshee's in the game. Points. Curry outside the line. A block. Tomorrow night, the UPS seven. 
highlights and interviews from today's NFL. Al Michaels and John Madden and John Madden. Al Michaels doing NBA. Going to work with Doc Rivers. Doing That's the right. Broadcast. Saw that Doc Rivers uh, not out of work very long. No. Well, he shouldn't be. And I got to believe he'll be back coaching somewhere. So it'll be a brief stint yeah. as an analyst. Just enjoy him while you can. That's right. And that's, that last possession is why Duke came up short last year. Curry, they got inside of five seconds. She attacked the rim. She made something good happen offensively. Gets to the free throw line. And now in that 1-3-1, they put Isis Tillis out on the wing. Makes it tough to get any kind of dribble penetration. Those outside shots. Holy and Heikis went down hard in a rebounding fray. No foul called. At times, has been a very aggressive matchup between Duke and Purdue today. Holy drives, now leans in, blocked away by Lawless. She's had a very solid game. Well, she has, and the one player that, you know, Tillis, I know she's in foul trouble, but she had a double-double against Texas and then against the other night against Elon College, only 13.6 rebounds. Kind of an, you know, average game, but she's just, I don't think, really kind of getting involved in this. Well, game. she just played poor defense exactly. again. If I'm Gail Guess, of course, she's sitting on the bench next to me. I know she's in foul trouble, but you've got to at least do something with it. Some pretty good athleticism there on Isis Tillis twice. She had her hands on it, lost it, got it back, and then found the basket. Now she finishes up on that play, but it's a matter of what I'm seeing from her is wanting the ball, wanting to be in there and making some plays like Dora said. I mean, you can be in foul trouble. You've got to at least make an attempt to do something. She does have three fouls, and Elena Beard remains on the bench with four. So she's been out for some time. Elena Beard with nine points. Yeah, she gave up the bucket on the other end. On this particular instance, good job just catching the basketball and then coming up with it, feeling the defender, and then turning them. You're right. I mean, that's just a feel, great athleticism, great instincts. We all know Isis has that part of the game. And she was swarmed defensively, but Purdue not getting down. They just kind of stood and looked at Isis till us get the ball. A look at the shooting right now, 52% for Purdue, just 42% for Duke, and yet the Blue Devils have a 53-39 lead. The Pantera on the offensive glass, and Bass has really come alive since Beard went out. Monique Curry really giving the nice bounce pass inside to Misty Bass. Bass wanting the ball. As a matter of fact, I think Deuce got to do a better job looking to get the ball inside. That's a charge on Sharika Wright. They couldn't let that one go. And well, once again, Duke takes a charge. They've been doing it all day. The one thing you can take from this as an offensive, Sharika Wright keeps going. She doesn't stop. She sees Misty Bass there, but that's one thing that the, these young Purdue players need to learn, even though Wright is a senior, you've got to stop when somebody is there or change of direction with your dribble. Yeah, I don't think she has a left-handed dribble, <laughs> Sharika Wright, so she can't go that way. Misty Bass leading Duke in scoring with 12. Tillis can't follow her miss. So right. the clock stops at 12.08 left here in this contest, and Duke with a 55-39 lead. Almost halfway into this second half, and Chrissy Curry, you know, has got to get her team fired up. I mean, she's the kind of coach that is so positive, but you can't get down, and I think in the next time out, I mean, she's looking right now to see how that they're going to come back. Heikis trying to force her way through. She was pinned in, but the foul goes against Duke here with 11.51 on the clock. That's a good call because they've got to let the offensive player at least have a step to make a move. Try to power it up there. She will go to the line. Well, she's got the sleeve on that left knee, Monique Curry, but we thought it would take her about a month to get confident after the ACL tear. This game, she seems like she's getting confidence on every possession. The attack of the rim is getting back to where she was two seasons ago. Well, and we mentioned that Elon College game that they played the other night. You know, not a lot of competition. I don't want to take anything away from them, but only 26 points. Mm. But it gives a player like Monique Curry the confidence to work on things in a game like that and to be more confident coming into this game. All right, regardless of competition, your game speed, and that's only helping Curry. 
Gerald's asked for a timeout after the catch, so Purdue takes the timeout here. 11-23 left in this contest, and Duke in pretty good command right now, 59 to 41. No better patience, I think, by Duke in the second half. Gil Guess, of course, talked about it. Watch that. I mean, ball reversal to a great entry pass, Monique Curry to Misty Bass. Then on the bottom side, strong side. And then watch this, folks. Three black jerseys between the passer and recipient. How does she get that in there, Ann? Well, she makes a good, quick pass. But Misty Bass also demanding the basketball, wanting it, showing everybody that, look it, I'm open. And Monique Curry recognizing the ability to get her the pass. Better job recognizing the second half that they can't handle Misty Bass physically. And a sophomore calling for the ball, and you, you mentioned the difference between Isis Tillis there, not really committing to wanting the ball as much. Bass clearly recognizing, look, Elena Beard's out, she's got foul trouble, someone else yeah. has to be the go-to mm. individual, and she's been it. Well, we talked so much last week about Emily Heikes. I thought she was an unsung hero for this Purdue team. The defense that she played on, Nicole Oldie. Oldie, a career low the first time in her career at Kansas State, only single digits. But in this game, it's a little bit different defending where she's got to move a little bit more. Oldie played out high, and, and Bass is just being real physical down underneath on her. Duke with a tremendous piece of defense here to completely shut down Purdue. And come away with a basketball here. Under 11 minutes to go in the second half. And now Christy Curry has gone with Lawless, the freshman against Misty Bass. Oh, Ellis. great mismatch right there. Who threw it? Duke. Monique, uh, Monique Curry. Curry. That's right. But Duke worked on that a lot in their practice yesterday as far as that switch. And, and Purdue said, look, we're going to switch. But you know what? They're not getting any weak side help when you got 6-5 Tillis against 5-6 Vilek. I think they're going to get bashed for that foul as Lawless went backing in on her trying to draw contact and managed to do it. But Gail Gestenkorst didn't think so. I didn't see it either. Well, I quite honestly believe that she got away with one on the other side. Ah. So. <laughs> because I thought Bass on the other end was really doing a number on Lawless pushing off. You give good, you get good, Dave O'Brien. That's the way it works. Well, Foley is going to come in and Curry out. Monique Curry's had a very strong floor game yes. here. She has six rebounds, four assists. Feels like she's got about 15 assists. And career high, seven assists. And again, all those career highs were as a freshman. She didn't play last year. She just gives Duke a, a different look that they didn't have last year, and that could really terrorize the ACC. Mm. Wallace at the line made one of two. So it's a 19 point lead and in danger of slipping away from Purdue unless they can shut down Duke on a few possessions in a row. The very impressive thing here is as good as Purdue is, they're falling behind by more and more. There's Foley from the wing, and that's with Elena Beard on the bench in foul trouble. She's been out for, what, about seven minutes now? Well, and that's what Gail Gessenkors is looking for, a better balanced team this year. And there's no question that she has players that have the ability to score, play defense, rebound, step up in different situations. But this is a key game with Beard on the bench. Well, I think this is a great lesson for Elena Beard because at the final four against Tennessee where she tried to single-handedly take over, you know, she can see, hey, I've got support. I don't have to be the be-all, end-all for my team to win a national championship. That should help her relax a bit this season. Beth Jones with a reach in foul, frustration foul there. The NFL and ESPN coming your way tonight at 8.30 Eastern. Steve Spurrier and the Washington Redskins head to Miami to take on Ricky Williams and the Dolphins. It all starts with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern time. Game also available in stunning high definition on ESPN HD and our happy birthday wishes to our own Doris Burke and I think she'll find a, a big screen maybe a flat screen <laughs> high definition waiting at home gift wrap from Annie Myers and Dave O'Brien you hear that Greg <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's sitting at home saying it's not coming for me or, or, or maybe not come to think of it drive and a foul with 9.41 to go here and Duke threaten threatening to really pull away from the Purdue Boilermakers who were 29 and 5 last season went to the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament trying to get back to the Final Four they were last in the National Semi in 2001 when they fell to Notre Dame. 
That was a great college oh. basketball game coming down to the final moments. Ruth Riley calmly hitting some free throws. Kate Douglas still had a chance at yes. the end of the game, mm -hmm. but Christy Curry only in her second year taking her team to the finals. And, and Muffet McGraw did a fabulous job that yes, year, Yes, she too. did. Christy Curry, the only coach in history to take over a national championship winning basketball team. She's won 80% of her games in four seasons at West Lafayette. They've got a quality coach at Purdue. And they were picked preseason to win the Big Ten. Mm. First, Winnie Portland and Penn State, who won it last year, not liking that. Carolyn Peck departing after the national title to go take the head coaching position at what was at that time the Orlando miracle of the WNBA. Tillis firing a pass off the backside of the backboard. And so Purdue will have the basketball here with 9.24 left. And Christy Curry in her fifth season now, her husband Kelly, an assistant coach on the bench. And she was pregnant all season last year. And uh, their second daughter, Kendall, Kelsey, the oldest. Kelsey, who's basically the mascot of this team, all the players adore her. She's always around the team. Fast found open again with the foul. She I will go to the line. I really like how Duke is really pushing the ball. Tillis getting a little bit more fire under her, getting coming up with a nice defensive rebound to get that fast break going and Foley with the pass here. And a little pump fake right there by Misty Bass, gathering herself, getting herself together, a chance for three. What we're seeing here in the second half is the perimeter size that Duke brings that has allowed them the vision to see over the defenders from Purdue, which is not a particularly large basketball team, inside or out. And the size of Duke, a real pivotal part of what's happened here this afternoon. And Gail Gessencourt was really worried about Purdue because the Big Ten is a very mm. physical conference. And they knew Purdue coming in it can really bang you. And Duke has stepped up to the, the task. Misty Bass now leading all scorers with 15 points. And there has been no need for Elena Beard to return to this game. Right, double teamed on the baseline. Gives it away. Sharika smiling, but that's a frustration grin more than anything else. And Elena Beard can just rest up the way this one's going. Well, she's such a competitor, though. She doesn't want to rest. <laughs> she wants to be in there. with a pull-up pop, a sweet jump shot from the foul line. So versatile, and she just has great skills. Isis Tillis, an All-American last year for Duke, along with Elena Beard, showing her ability to put the ball on the floor. And we know she can shoot the outside shot. Gail Gessencourt has worked with her, and the coaches have talked to her, say, you've got to post up, you've got to post up. But she is so good at facing the basket and taking the outside shot. Yeah, she really is a skilled offensive player. I think the one thing she's avoided, and the one thing we've talked about Duke, their willingness to step in and take charges and give up the body. <laughs> Isis is not quite that committed yet. No well, bad news for the rest of the ACC. Isis Tillis actually grew yes. since last season. She grew an additional inch from 6'4 to 6'5, causing her some back problems. Mm. But she's actually taller. She actually has scoliosis, and it's a, a, a thing where the sports medicine staff for Duke has got to watch it. A fairly significant curvature of her spine. It does cause some discomfort and something they must keep an eye on on a fairly consistent basis. And last year she had some exercises and stretching exercises that really helped kind of stretch that out and straighten that spine out a little bit. Grapel in the paint gives off for Tillis. Wow, in traffic, the ability to get the shot off. Tough, tough shot. And that's what the top teams do. Isis with 13. Belek lost it. She was fouled, and now Elena Beard is going to return after a long, long stretch. Nine or ten minutes, she was out of this game with four fouls. She's finally back in. Monique Curry will also return. Harding and Bass out. Misty Bass really taking over this game when Beard went out and leaves with 15 points. Only Sharika right now has more with 16. And Sharika Wright has really struggled as far as getting any kind of offense going for herself. A lot of that has been due to the defense that Duke is putting on her. Vallette gets the first. 
Eric Kubelek. Little playmaker, a favorite for the Francis Pomeroy Naismith Award that's presented annually to the nation's outstanding women's player who stands under 5'8". She's 5'6". And a timeout. When we come back, Nick and Pam Balmano will be joining our own Doris Burke to talk about this great event, the Jimmy B Classic in Raleigh, North Carolina. For a close shave, you need to get a razor and lather up. For a quick shave on the go, you need to settle for an electric. But what if you really want both? Nick Bolton here with the newest addition to our tactical line, the Bell & Howell Tax Shaver. Designed with the needs of our military in mind, Tax Shaver gives you a quick, razor-smooth shave, whether you're at home or on the go. It even has a built-in trimmer for sideburns and beards. And it works wet or dry for a great shave in even the harshest conditions. That's right, the tax shaver is completely waterproof. In fact, you could even use a tax shaver underwater and still get a great shave. Navy guys, tax shaver is small and compact, so it slips easily into any pocket. Yet it also has three powerful rotary heads that can easily take on even the coarsest hair. To prove it, I'm going to do something I never do. Shave. As you can see, it easily handled even my stubborn stubble. Now that's what I call military top. So let's review. Tack Shaver gives you a quick, razor smooth shave, features a built in trimmer, works wet or dry, even underwater, and has three powerful shaving heads. I mean, there's just nothing like it on the market today. Act now to get your tax shaver for this special TV price of just $29.99 with free shipping. It's the only shaver that features genuine Bell & Howell precision and quality and is backed by our 10-year warranty. That's right. Call or click today to get your tax shaver and we'll ship it to you free. Act now to get the Bell & Howell tax shaver at this special TV price. Here's how to order. To order, call 1-800-282-8318 or go to TaxShaver.com. That's 1-800-282-8318 or you can order online at TaxShaver.com. Here's an important message from the Diabetes Solution Center. Diabetics understand all too well the pain of pricking your fingers. But now, by wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor or CGM, you can immediately reduce your pain. It's easy to use and helps you make more accurate diabetes treatment decisions. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn about this groundbreaking new CGM technology. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four or more times daily, injecting insulin three or more times daily, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetes Solution Center right now to learn how you can get your own continuous glucose monitor or CGM at little to no out-of-pocket cost. It's starting to feel like a routine, man. I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> it's go time. Situations like this where you really have to come together for the same cause. Hopefully that moment was a step forward. I spoke for all 100 guys on our team. All our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division One sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys got to have me on more often, man. You got to start coming together. We really have a loaded show. Dr. Endura, weekdays, 8 to 10 a.m. on ACCN. Jimmy V Women's Classic is fueled by Pontiac. Vote for this week's ultimate Pontiac high-performance play at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. And in part by Subway. Good so you don't always have to be. Subway, eat fresh. Duke with a 70-46 lead here in the Jimmy V Classic game number two. 
as Duke has taken a commanding lead against Purdue. Let's go to Doris Burke with a special guest. Doris. Well, we've got a couple of very special guests. Thank you, Dave. CEO of the V Foundation, Nick Balvano, and Pam Balvano with us also, the wife of the late Jim Balvano. And I guess, Nick, let's talk. You had great success on the men's side running this type of tournament. What was the impetus for doing it on the women's side? I think there were two things. One was uh, actually Jim's love of women's basketball. And, and secondly, more importantly, I didn't think on the foundation level we were focusing on women's cancer initiatives enough. So we wanted to create an event uh, for that purpose. And uh, we have raised $100,000 in two years and funded two research grants as a result of this tournament. Well, great work. And Pam, if you could just, I mean, this has got to be an emotional event for you. You're doing such great work with the V Foundation. Talk about your feelings. Oh, it's, it's, uh, this tournament is very special, of course, because having it in Raleigh and having K.O. involved, Jim and K.O. were very, very close, and her involvement in the foundation, uh, j it just makes it so special for us to be here. Well, congratulations, both of you, on the great work of the V Foundation. We're so proud and pleased to be here with you. Thanks for your spin's help. Dave, back to you. Pam, Nick, thank you very much, and again... Our best wishes to the foundation. They do sensation to work $100,000 over the last couple of years. Kay Yao, of course, the head coach of the NC State women's program, a cancer survivor in her own right. Well, and that's huge because Pam, his, Jimmy's wife, talked about the relationship that he had with Kay Yao. And it, it's, he loved basketball, whether it was men's or women's basketball, as Nick, his brother, said. But the relationship that they had, a perfect example is this. He was the athletic director and head coach. and. They got scheduled to have practice at the same time at the same gym. And Kay Yao, her team was playing North Carolina, an intense rival, the next day. And Jimmy Valvano had a, you know, a non-conference game kind of meaningless. He said, look it, I'll practice for 45 minutes, and then you take the court the rest of the time. How many major Division I head coaches, men, would ever do that for the women's program? I find it very difficult to name one besides Jimmy a Valvano. Very, very unique gentleman. And that doesn't even go to the other point. Uh, we've been laughing most of the day today as we've seen one of Jim's stories after another replay from the great SB speech. Beard on a back door gets open. And that amazing sense of humor that just had them rolling in the aisles. He owned every room he ever, ever worked. He just brings great joy. You can't help but smile when you see his face and the things that he says. <laughs> Layup tapped away to comes to Isis Tillis. Duke looking for more. There's Beard ahead of the field. And the foul. She'll go to the line. What you like about that is from the right side and the ability for Elena Beard to take it on the right with the right hand when she's left-handed. Again, the boards, we've talked about this game maybe being a key as far as what Duke was going to do dominating. They dominated the offensive boards. Now they're dominating the defensive boards. Purdue is getting stuck in the mud. Uh, it almost looks like they're having layup lines. It almost looks like they're having layup lines right now at Duke University. And I'll tell you this, they're going to put an awful lot of pressure on you both sides of the basketball, offensively and defensively. Everybody wants to talk about defensive pressure, Dave O'Brien. How about the kinds of offensive pressure? Remind you of the Connecticut teams where they put so much pressure by their ability to get runouts, and Christy Curry has seen plenty of examples of that. And they just wear you down mm. and wear you down over the course of a half, as Duke has done here, because their halftime lead was only nine points. That was manageable for Purdue, especially the way they were shooting, over 50%. And I'm not saying Purdue has given up not whatsoever, but Christy Curry has gone to some young players and to see what they can do in this game and, and see if they can chip away a little bit. Sharika Wright, she's had kind of a frustrating game today. She scored some points. She has 16 points, but her team is down 29. Billiards coming up next. It's the 2000 Trick Shot Magic. As soon as we finish up, Dave O'Brien, Ann Myers, Doris Burke with you. This is game number two in the Jimmy V Women's Classic. In game number one, Jamie Carey was terrific for Texas. She poured in 23 points, a number of big three-pointers as well. And the Longhorns look like a team very serious about going back to the Final Four. Well, not when we talked to Jody Conrad after the game. <laughs> she was a little upset. <laughs> Did not think they were very good offensively. Lots of action around women's college basketball today. Texas Tech and Rutgers squaring off in the WNIT Finals. And I'll tell you this, both those teams had played four games going in, all four of their opponents under 50 points so those are gritty determined defensive teams
Tarazi, two assists and three rebounds away from a triple double in game one. Welcome back, Diana. Indeed. Lots of good stuff. Tennessee opening up today. And you're going to find early, too, that some of these teams are going to be strong, but yet they're still learning in this process of what their offense is. Like last year when Duke beat Tennessee here at the Jimmy V, it was people were very, very stunned. But Tennessee, they were they had so many players that were still trying to understand what the offense was going to be. And in these early games, yes, they're good as far as confidence with some teams, but yes, they're also good to find out what they need to work on and if they're going to be good enough by January. Yeah. Now, Tennessee flying beneath the radar screen, folks. You don't say that very often about Pat Summit. Well, yeah, not a lot, not a lot of discussion about the Volunteers. What do you think, though? Can that work to Pat Summit's advantage? I mean, not the heated spotlight, not as much anyway as uh, when they were in the past annually picked to win the national championship. Is that going to work to their favor this year? Well, I think very much on her part, she's looking forward to it, taking some pressure off the young players and. Uh, you know, getting things together. People are always going to, you know, and there's a great shot by Gerald's knocking, you know, a patented outside shot down for her. But Tennessee and Connecticut are going to be the top two teams, no matter what, that will bring the crowd in, that bring the audience. Now it's up to the Dukes and the Stanfords to come back and the Purdue's and Texas to come back on top and, and see what they can do. But Tennessee and Connecticut are still the two teams that draw. Ten national titles between them. Tennessee with six, Connecticut with four. And until Duke wins national titles, they will not be mentioned in the same breath. Have they done a phenomenal job? No question. Are they one of the most talented teams in the country? Yes. Have they been to back-to-back -back Final Fours? Yes. But Gail Guestacores knows her legacy will depend on how many championships she wins if she wants to be considered in the same breath with those two programs. And I also think, Doris, it starts with this team. They've got to believe that they are a top team in this country. They can't talk about the other teams being top, uh, top teams in the country. They are it, and they're showing it right now in the second half. Yeah. Uh, Purdue has lost their fight in their drive at this point. away by Beard. I guess it goes without saying that that Harley Davidson motorcycle that Michael Jordan presented to Roy a few years ago. He's not riding that either. Certainly not to the golf course. Less than four minutes to go here. Duke in command 84 53. Look closely. This $50 Buffalo gold piece was the purest gold coin ever struck using .9999, that's four nines, pure 24 karat gold. The U.S. government had to stop production because of a shortage of specially made gold blanks. It's no wonder the price of that edition has gone through the roof. Now, you can reserve your own copy clad in 14 milligrams of 24 karat gold. The final issue price was to be set at $50 per proof. But now, this private, non-monetary 24 karat gold clad masterpiece can be yours for only $9.95. With gold prices up over 300% since 2004, price can only be guaranteed for seven days. Each new 2020 $50 Gold Buffalo Tribute Proof is clad in 14 milligrams of 24 karat gold, is proof struck, and utilizes the famous Buffalo Nickel design. Strict limit of five proofs per caller. You must hurry. Call now. To order, call 1-800-750-8194. It's a war zone out there, and your car's paint gets attacked every day by acid rain, damaging rocks, scorching sun, leaving your paint dull and faded. Now you can clean, shine, and protect with Shine Armor, the amazing new car polish that's made with super nano ceramic, guaranteed to be the greatest shine and protection you've ever used. Just spray it on to restore your car's finish with ease. It's not a wax, but a high-tech ceramic shield that instantly repels dirt and Debris. Nothing sticks, and water just dances right off. Even a fried egg won't stick. Amazing. No matter where you drive, everything cleans up just like that. Shine Armor with Nano Ceramic is made in the USA, and it's not just a little better, it's a lot better, making all other polishes obsolete. The secret? Our exclusive ceramic formula that fills in micro cracks and crevices to create an ultra durable protective barrier against harsh elements. 
even fire can't break the protection. And nuts and bolts just bounce off without a scratch. Bumpers, trim, mirrors, glass, and more. You'll get a beautiful showroom shine with Shine Armor. Professional ceramic finishes can cost you thousands, but act now and get Shine Armor for only $19.99. But wait, we'll also send you two premium microfiber towels for a perfect, easy application in just minutes. Absolutely free. And we're not done. We'll double this offer and send you a second set. That's enough Shine Armor for your cars, trucks, boats, RVs, and more. Just pay a separate fee, and we'll ship it to you free. That's two bottles of Shine Armor, four microfiber towels, and free shipping. But you have to call or click now. To order, call 1-800-496-5817 or go online at buyshinearmor.com. Don't delay. Call 1-800-496-5817 or go online at buyshinearmor.com. Order now. It's starting to feel like a routine, man. I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> it's go time. Situations like this where you really have to come together for the same cause. Hopefully that moment was a step forward. I spoke for all 100 guys on our team. All our backgrounds put together. To have the longest win streak in Division One sports, that's pretty special, I think. You guys got to have me on more often, man. You got to start coming together. We really have a loaded show. Dr. Endura, weekdays, 8 to 10 a.m. on ACCN. Misty Bass, 15 points, six for nine shooting, meriting her the Pontiac player of the game here. She really demanded the ball. Elena Beard went out and she was aggressive, posting up low, big and wide. And Monique Curry, the teammate that was getting her the ball inside, but she was the one that was making things happen for Duke. Now talking about Elena Beard, 16 points. Sharika Wright also with 16 points. A couple of Player of the Year candidates. You've got Diana Tarazi with UConn and Elena Beard, roundly considered as far as the weight trophy is concerned, the two leading candidates. Andy, let me get your thoughts on it, and who do you think is going to take a big lead as far as popularity for those awards? As Wright follows almost on cue there, she has 18. Well, remember, you're talking to a West Coast person, too. I know, I know <laughs> yeah. Nicole Powell out in Stanford is not too shabby either, mm. but. You know, really, the West Coast doesn't get as much exposure, but connect Diana Trossi and Elena Beard, Nicole Oldie. I, you know, my mind is like going the the three at Texas right now: Shriver, Stevens, and, and Carey. But uh, I th I think those are the top two. But you never know. I mean, because things can happen in a game as far as injuries, as far as fouls, as far as cold nights, and uh, teams defending up and uh, they've got to sh show up for their senior year. Well, we certainly can can talk about injuries today because Brittany Hunter's status at this point unknown, the sensational freshman for Duke and a huge part of what they hope to be a run at the national championship this season. She'll have an MRI tomorrow, but to me that's a huge loss. The athlete, if indeed she is out and the athleticism she brings, she's a terror on the board, she commands the basketball. She brings an attitude yes. to the bench. I mean, she's in other players' faces and, and getting them up for the game. Yeah, I mean, to the point where Gail Guest, of course, had to have conversations with Brittany Hunter this week about, you know, time and place for commanding the basketball when you have the likes of Beard and Tillis on your team. And that's something the young freshman will learn. And our hope is, obviously, that that MRI turns up negative. Uh, because Gail Guest, of course, I, I truly believe needs Brittany Hunter to be great to win a national title. That's how good the likes of Texas and Connecticut and Tennessee are this year. Not too much to ask of a freshman. She was in tears earlier when she came out of the locker room off the training table. After she hobbled in on crutches back to the court. Well, and, and it shows you too. I mean, she may look like she, she's got a strong body and everything. And I, I firmly believe, and that's just my opinion, that. I don't think a lot of high school kids or freshmen or sophomores in college are ready for the next level in the WNBA because it's not just only the physicality, but the emotional and the mental process of what you need to do out on the road. Misty Bass Beard follows and lays it in. She kept on coming through the lane. And there's something to be said to enjoying your college years. 
Erika Wright pushing up two more points. She's reached 20. Duke has really, really dominated in the second half last season. They did it with a plus 25 scoring margin that led the nation, and they're on their way to another huge win today. Well, they, they set a Duke record, ACC record, as far as beating Milan College by 82 mm. points, 108 to 26. Well, Duke has got the fourth toughest rated schedule in the country behind Tennessee, Penn State, and I believe it's Old Dominion. And the reason Gail Guested Corps put together that schedule is because she's dominated the ACC. First time in history that an ACC school goes back to back undefeated seasons. 19 0, 19 0, when you include the three wins in the ACC tournament. Didn't feel like maybe there was enough preparation from the ACC schedule, so she goes out and she schedules tough teams. And there's Curry going out. And that's what you have to do year in and year out. Now, you may not feel that your conference is quite as tough as, as like the Big 12 or, or the SEC, but you've got to go out and find those teams to play against in preseason. No, I think, she, I think she likes her conference. I just think she felt like she needed the additional games. I think Virginia's going to be a very good basketball team. The North Carolina matchups right. with Duke are going to be right. sensational this year. Oh, Beard takes a crunching hit. No foul there, running right into a Purdue defender. Beth Jones lines up a long one and missed it. By the way, Dana Morgan into the ball game for Duke, wearing number 14. She has the basketball right now. She is the only walk-on for Gail Guest, of course. In a tryout, she was invited to try and make the team, and she did exactly that. Inside the pass, yeah, once again, she had a great game. She really did, and she's got to be consistent as far as a sophomore this year to establish herself, especially Again, like we said with Brittany Hunter, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, Winter Whitley's going to come back, hopefully in January, which will help some inside play for Duke. Bass with 17. And so 92-63 with 34 seconds left. We anticipated a closer game here today. Duke playing several levels above what we saw a week ago. Mm. Now they have lost Brittany Hunter for how long, we don't know. A sprained knee is all they're calling it now. She'll have an MRI tomorrow. So there's going to be that. Well, Lindsey Harding's got to get rid of the basketball. <laughs> Finally did into the offensive zone. So 14 seconds left in this contest. Wet one, wet one. Well, we're seeing a lot more smiles out of Brittany, and that's nice because she looked devastated when she went down with the injury early in the game. But a very gifted freshman from Columbus, Ohio, Miss Ohio basketball last year, McDonald's All-American. On the topic of all Americas, Elena Beard in this game, 20 points and nine rebounds, along with five assists for Beard. And she was out a big chunk of the second half with four fouls. And those are the kind of numbers she's going to put up all season long. She averaged 22 points last year. And the only, the only player that has averaged over 20 points at Duke has been Chris Moreland, who's the all-time leading scorer. And Elena Beard's not too far behind. Plays hard all the time, doesn't she? <laughs> she just scoots inside on the offensive board. Now, even in a 30-point game, it's long since been decided. That will be your final. Duke cruises over Purdue. And a big win over a top-10 program, 93-63. They knock off the Boilermakers. Elena Beard, one of the stars today. She wound up with a double-double. Misty Bass was their brightest star today with 18 points. Billiards coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Ann Myers, Doris Burke, I'm Dave O'Brien. So long from the 2003 Jimmy B. Women's Basketball Classic. Good night, everybody.